It's July the 30th, 2010. I'm Mike Benedetti. It's 508 at Show About Worcester here with Brendan Mellican. Good afternoon, sir. Good. How are you doing? Excellent. I'm kind of tired. I'm, I'm saying how I'm tired. doing even before you asked me how I'm doing. What's that? I said good even before you said anything. Well, it's, now people know that the whole show is scripted. <laughs> there you go. Brendan, uh, Brendan pointed out that there's a dime bag over here on the ground. It's not just cooked fun. And uh, we're not going to touch it because there's police over there. <laughs> we just illegally videotaped the police. Um, this morning was Dan Dick's funeral down the street at Blessed Sacrament. Uh, Dan Dick, uh, you know, who I know as, uh, which way is the sun coming here? From behind us? Um, right over there. It's kind of the, probably the terrible angle. Dan, uh, Dan, you know, was this part of an older generation of activists. That's how I knew him. A lot of people knew him in a lot of ways. We wouldn't pretend to try to sum up the man's life uh, here on the show. But that's sort of, you know, he was in the Navy. Uh, he worked, he was a partner in a firm that did uh, woodwork and other architectural stuff for churches around mm-hmm. here. And, uh, you know, married for 61 years, a million kids, a million grandkids, but really active in civil rights and then active in the anti-Vietnam War movement, really a pivotal guy in that. Um, And then later on really interested in uh, alternative energy and environmentalism Mm -hmm. and uh, reform in the Catholic Church. One of the, he, uh, in the the paper in his obituary, said that in lieu of flowers, you could give to either Dismas House or the uh, Women's Ordination Congress. (laughs) Nice. <laughs> yeah, they let, and they let him have the funeral mass in a church. Perfect. It was great. Anyway, uh, I don't even know what I wanted to bring up. I guess I just went, oh, and also the, the day after he died, there was a letter from the editor from him in the Telegram and Gazette <laughs> complaining about, he was t- discussing why, why, why it was a bad idea for the, uh, some, some of the state colleges in Massachusetts to suddenly become uh, state universities. Uh, he, was a, he was against this idea. Yeah, but uh, there you go. So at the, he was also really into watersheds, and not a lot of people are. I've only gotten into watersheds in my late twenties. Yeah. I don't know if you were feeling about watersheds. So at the end of at the end of uh, at the end of this show in WCCA, we'll have ten minutes of him talking about Worcester's water supply. It just happens to be a clip of him. I have this the right length, and it wasn't an issue he was interested in. And uh, does yeah. it break any rules when bystanders uh, don't break don't our say anything? Don't, don't say that. Sorry. And I didn't hear anything. And also for people watching on the internet, there'll be a YouTube of that. Uh, how are you doing this week? I'm good. You know, we have a bad habit of pointing out things on camera that people watching the show can't actually see. I'd just like to point out that over here, anyone who ever wanted to see inside Paris Cinema without paying to go inside Paris oh. Cinema, you can actually see inside now through the hole in the wall. I think people can see because it's high contrast, right? Right there. Right, right where that guy's head is, is a big hole in the wall of Paris Cinema. What are, are they turning it into something? Um, yeah, it's going to be an adult movie theater. Really? No. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I don't know if there's any plans for, hey, but it's the one it. thing in this whole block now that really hasn't been touched. So sooner or later, maybe it'll make a nice parking lot or something. But it, it's something, something has to happen with it soon. Oh, well, there you go. Um, I want to mention that tr- True Value. You ever shop at the True Value Hardware on Park Avenue? True Value Hardware on Park Avenue. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Down by Clark. It's one of it's I one shop of our. I at Elwood Adams, old oh. hardware store. There you go. Well, good, good for you. It's an absolute well, lie. Well, this is the only hardware store that's independent and within striking distance of where I usually am and okay. uh, they're running their final sale right now final. no surprise has been happening we've been declining in their stock for a couple of years now but uh, they're just making me think about uh, locally owned businesses in Worcester mm-hmm. well you know most of our hardware stores over the years it seems in this area have gone to Ace Hardware True Value used to be the big name it's like yeah. Ace kind of moved yeah. you know so it's, you know here's the thing like Ace Hardware I mean Ace Hardware is not independently owned right. but it's small and it's Convenient, but Ace Hardware has the same problem for me like Home Depot has, mm-hmm. which is like I go in there and I'm like, I want a carbon monoxide detector, and the guy would be like, Well, the carbon di- dioxide detectors are <laughs> over there, and it's like, you know, it's like it's staffed by like 16 year olds who don't know anything right. about it, or sh- more shamefully, 35 year olds who don't know anything about it. And the thing I always like about a true value or any independent hardware store anywhere is that guy, that like 70 year old guy, that you go in the store and you're like, I have one of these, and I need to get a replacement for this, and he'll be like, well, you could pay 40 cents for one of those, but really what you need is this thing over here, which is 20 cents, it does the job twice as good, right. and will last 50 years. You feel as though the people actually have a stake in what they're, what they're doing. Yeah, they care. yeah. And it's like, I could go to the hardware store with my dad, but my dad my dad knows about the stuff, but he doesn't know like where the stuff is, and he doesn't have, you know, he hasn't been working in the hardware store for 50 years. Right. And so it's just, I don't know, it's just a big loss when these places shut down. It is a big loss. 
Well, and the other problem, too, I always find with the Home Depot is Ace Hardware as well, is uh, they have nothing that you actually need and everything that you don't need but are still compelled to buy. Uh, so I, like, anytime I walk into you know Home Depot or what have you, I never walk out with what I went in for, but I come out with like arms <laughs> full of stuff that it just ends up being clutter in my house. Useful stuff. It's, it's just an entire superstore of impulse buys. Well, you know, it was making me think, too, these guys are one of the charter members of Worcester Local First. I'd be interested. Here's a, here's a uh, assignment for our people at home. Um, let's get some anecdotal information on how locally owned businesses have been doing the last few years, you know. Like, I don't exactly know, like, statistically how we would figure this out. It would be interesting to see, like, I assume, I mean, Worcester Local First is obviously not doing anything negative for our local businesses. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to see if, to, to quant- if you could quantify, you know, the impact that an organization like that has had. Even if you can't quantify that, and I, don't, I think it's probably more work than I can do to quantify that. I'd just like to hear some anecdotal stuff. Well, we've got some good businesses around here, too, that are, are obviously locally owned, but are, are small enough where they just kind of barely come on the radar, like, like Dr. Gonzo, like, yeah. great, or like the Armsby Abbey. Those, those right guys in, are all over the radar. They are, but in, in a, in a, within circles, right? I mean, you know, and they're doing something at a time when you know, conventional wisdom says you just can't be doing that now. You know, yeah. The economy's too bad, you can't open a small business, but we got people hitting a home run. Right. Uh, whereas on the stuff that getting the biggest whiff of weed right now, is that you smoking, or is it the people next to me? Somebody's smoking a joint, like right on top of me, and I'm not necessarily complaining. It's just a nobody. There doesn't seem to be anybody who's obviously doing smoking it. smoking weed down here. The, um, you know, it, it, we're in a time too where you've got so much growth in the box stores, I mean, like Walmart and what have you. Yeah. You should be seeing, or at least the argument, you know, the conventional wisdom says you should be seeing a decline in a lot of those service industry type businesses. But then you've also got the double whammy of the, the economy. So, like, how do you how do you quantify that? Do you do you focus on uh, the hit that would be coming out of the big box stores, or do you focus on uh, businesses doing poorly just because of the recession? Uh, is it possible to combine those two effects and come up with a, a completely different way to, to, to approach things? I think what you do is you take a, you take you look at 150 cities and you compare uh, locally owned businesses over the last five years, and then you compare those with local first groups and those without, and then you compare Worcester to that. And this, is, and this is why Worcester I'm not to going to do this. Okay, there you go. <laughs> no you Worcester. say Worcester's incomparable, we'll never know. That's the other way you could do it. Um, I, uh, I wanted, so I wanted to mention that. Uh, we, get two, uh, we get two feedbacks via the Facebook. One says people should know about the Park Stewards program, which I guess is a kind of like internshipy thing that maybe the young people would want to do. You can go down to the Neighborhood Network Center and ask them about the Park Stewards program. And the other is that there's a BSL meeting on the 10th. What is the BSL meeting? I, I, I don't know. Black, black Student Liberation, maybe. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't know. There's a Black Student Liberation meeting on the 10th, people should know about. Is that the group that Mayor Rizzo dropped uh, napalm on? And, and back You're like, thinking of move. No. Um, and you know, something else that I can mention, Art in the Park. I know we, 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 a couple yeah. years ago we did a walking tour, but that's up and running now. Mm-hmm. Uh, drove by Elm Park. It seems like I always know it's coming, but it's not until I actually drive by Elm Park and some massive statue just hits me in the face that I remember that it's actually there, but definitely worth checking out this year. And they're going to be doing some very fancy stuff. They're going to be doing this Celery Bridges project where they hang you know, these sort of improvised woven things from sent in from around the world, but many of them made locally, hang them from all the bridges in a big project. Mm-hmm. Also, I think they're going to do the... Um, they're going to do that, something like the hang your creative laundry that they've done in the past. Mm-hmm. I think on the 13th. I don't remember when exactly. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on at Elm Park if you like these public art projects. Just um, go there whenever you can. There you go. I also, somebody said I should talk about Sam Bonacci has left Worcester Magazine. I don't I, know any of the details about this. I don't know anybody. There's just like so much turnover. I've he been was wondering, a really nice guy. Did you meet him? I did meet him. I've been wondering recently if I might have been a staff writer at Worcester Magazine at some point mm-hmm. recently. You were maybe, actually hired maybe the fired editor. without you knowing just It's to keep the possible. Yeah. It's like an alien abduction. You know, you wake up and you wake up and you've got like some, you know, some burn marks on your back and you've got Did a, you see this week's a check from a thousand dollars from Gareth Charter in your pocket. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a pink slip <laughs> stapled to the back. <laughs> Did you see Worcester Magazine this week? I did. Um, did you see Brian's uh, cover story? About This is uh, about local veterans. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I, read it. I no. liked that. It, it was, you know, there's no shortage of veteran stories out there, but to actually put a name and a face on those stories and frame it on a local level, mm-hmm. I like that. We always quit criticize Worcester Magazine. I know it's fun, and I know someday Doreen will come on and, and rebut all of our criticism, but for the time being, it's, it, we're, we're going to give uh, props where they're due. We're going to have Doreen on this show. We are. 
I think I'm going to go to the next Worcester Magazine on tap, and I'm going to take photos of all the staff writers. Just like your own and we're just going to see. Page. We're going to have what? What do they call that? Like a death a death watch? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to set up a, a death pool. That's death what you pool. call it. A yeah. betting pool for Worcester Magazine staff. It's going to be fun. Well, if she's Will ever they be on the show, to bet against we'll... themselves. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Then I'm in. <laughs> Um, of course. Yeah, we, 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 Doreen did commit to coming on sometime, so if you're awesome. out there. Awesome. Um, yeah. Got anything else? Uh, no, I mean, I don't think there's been a lot going on this week. No city council meeting, right? Uh, They're taking vacation? Uh, there's only two this summer, so no, I don't think this week is one of them. And uh, oh, the weather's been nice. Beautiful weather. This time last year, we were like, what, six weeks into rain? This is, this is good. Well, from the Worcester Commons, I'm Mike Benedetti. Brendan Milliken. Everyone, have a great have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Enjoy the Dan Dick video about watersheds. <laughs>